you'll have to bear with me today i have not had enough sleep sleep has become i mean it's never been great for me but it's become even more challenging this year in the last vlog i was saying how my pms was bad and now i'm saying how tired i am sorry guys oh these were definitely needed this morning i'd run out of my usual ones i had these soap and glory ones lying around there aren't many other eye masks that i like but i actually liked these they pretty much stayed in place thinking i'm gonna have to do my makeup after the school run this morning i'm going to um take myself to a coffee shop i'm gonna take my laptop back in the old days i used to do it all the time i took my laptop to a coffee shop last week it was really nice it made a makes a nice change of scenery i can't take my editing anywhere because it's all on my big computer editing on a laptop is just it's not it's doable but it's not ideal and even when you use external hard drives i find that it slows my laptop up and then when you get used to editing on a bigger screen it's really hard to go back to editing on a smaller lap oh i think you guys are sliding around a bit in the plant pot and i can hear the bin men i think our garden waste is finally getting collected it's not been collected for i don't know how long but they've had shortages with drivers and we've not had our garden waste collected <laughs> and our bin has just been full for so long and i think that might be them picking up our garden waste exciting times i'm after eye cream recommendations if anyone has some because this <laughs> This is not an eye cream. This is just the uh, La Roche Posay Soothing Moisturiser. This is recommended with my Skin and Me prescription. I use it on the areas of my face that get quite dry. This time of year, I have a tendency to get redness and dryness around my nose here. I'll use it on my neck, although I think I could probably do with a richer, richer cream around my neck. I'd quite like to start using an eye cream. I've used some over the years and been, I mean, I'm not expecting much from an eye cream. Uh, I just, I want it to, I want it to feel nourishing and to work well under makeup. I think I must have quite sensitive eyes because I used a Kiehl's one about a year ago and it, I started to come up in a, in a funny rash. But yeah, recommendations um, would be appreciated. I think from now on, because it was really nice last week when I did it, anything that I can do on my laptop would be quite nice to maybe once a week and um, get out and just do it somewhere that's not in the house for years i've known that i feel so much better i have a much product much more productive day when i've got out first thing in the morning be it walking somewhere running a few errands going to the gym doing food shop whatever it whatever it is i just always feel better for doing them in the morning so if i have anything i need can I, can I hi gorgeous hi gorgeous did you know i can do this Oh, wow <laughs> despite knowing this i still have days where i like one day is okay i can do one day without leaving the house but anymore i start to feel a bit rubbish and um the brain fog kicks in for really lethargic and so yeah i think there's something about god i'm waffling on aren't i there's something about getting out i think obviously getting a bit of exercise walking around fresh air daylight and even though i'm not seeing anyone or like having a conversation with someone just being around people um probably helps it just essentially i'm saying it's better for me to get to get out first thing anyway that's <laughs> so that's enough talking for the start of the vlog recently delilah's been having packed lunches on a couple of days two three days of the week and then other days she'll have a school dinner still she's been asking me if she could have a packed lunch and um i think I think it's mostly because her best friend has packed lunches. Today she's got some fruit, she's got some peach, grapes, strawberries. Somehow managed to lose the cool pack that um, I got her for her packed lunch. I don't know how you lose something like that, but I can't find it anywhere. Luckily, it's um, cold at the moment anyway. So this is a, it doesn't look very appetizing, does it? But it's a wholemeal seeded wrap with um, tuna and cucumber in. We went shopping at the weekend and she asked if she could have one of these in her pat lunch. So she's got one of these um, peach and apricot sucky collective thingies. Got quite a lot of fruit and that wrap has quite a lot of tuna in. So I did ask her if she wanted some of these hip peas, but um, she said she didn't want them. And I don't think she'll need them actually. Quite a lot there, it's quite filling stuff. This lunch bag, which is so cute. It's machine washable. It has surprisingly stayed quite clean. You roll it down and then it velcros up like that. I found it on Scandi Ball. I'll see if I can 
find this to link it. Flowers, if you can see that flowers, I don't know what it says. <laughs> Let's go, go, go! Let's go! No amount of concealer is going to cover up my eyes today. I've got foundation, concealer and BB cream on underneath my eyes and <laughs> I can't cover up the darkness. I love how you can see my pile of jumpers on my rail over there. It's because they're too they take up so much room folded up so I can't I can't fit them in my chest of drawers. I've resorted to piling them up on on top of each other. Let's get going. I am charged was all organised and charged my laptop last night so I don't need to find find somewhere where I need to plug it in. I have just spent over half an hour trying to find my laptop case. It's so old and this isn't dirt. This is where um this is obviously where it's been sat in the sun and the sun has bleached it. That's the original colour. <laughs> Found this. Still can't find my hat. I had it on all of about fifty 15 hours ago. I don't know where I've put it. I'm looking forward to coming back and sorting through my books. Where's... I was just about to ask where my camera is. Decided to walk all the way in. It is such a grey day today. <laughs> I'm finally going to get all these books that I've had piled here over the weekend on the shelves over there. I've been waiting a long time for this day, for the day that I finally get to put all my books on a shelf in here. And as per a fair few of your requests, whilst I do it, I'm going to go through my book collection. When I see it there on the chair, it does actually look like, I mean, it looks like a lot of books, but it doesn't look like a lot. I don't think they're going to fill the shelves at all, which is good because I um, would like room for um, more books in the future. I'm not gonna go into loads of detail about every book, otherwise we'll be here all day. But I will show you every book. Dare, dare I say I'll leave a link to them in the description. That's a, that's a lot of books to link, maybe. I might, I'll, I'll try, I'll do my best. I mostly get my books from Waterstones. Um, main reason being it's the only book shop in our town. Every now and again, I'll go in and look at their buy one, get one half price section. Whenever we're traveling, if we come across an independent book shop, um, I love to go in and support them. I do get books from Amazon as well. And there's a couple of secondhand book shops online that I occasionally buy from. I've made myself a coffee and I've forgotten about it. And I'm going to be really annoying again and I'm um, I'm gonna i I'm gonna take my jumper off because now apparently hot again. It's one of those days. This top by the way, I'm certain I can link. Um I just found it on ASOS, it's top shop. First four books here are the newest ones to my collection. Oh actually these five. <laughs> I'm putting myself on a book buying ban because I'm not reading them as quick as I'm buying them. I'm reading nowhere near as many books as I um, was last year. Uh, I think I go through phases. I love reading but sometimes my brain, I just can't engage my brain to concentrate. There are a few books that I'll show here that I have read um, some but almost all of. I can't tell if I read it at another point that I would actually enjoy it or whether it's just the book itself I'm not enjoying. We've got The Book of Two Ways, Betty. Um, this one is set in 1954. This had a sticker on saying that it had exclusive, like extra exclusive content for Waterstones and can't like for me get the sticker off, which is um, a little annoying. We've got Breakfast and Eggs. Again, I like the sound of it. And um, this is another one, Shaggy Bane. I just, the cover really intrigued me. The reviews on the back um, made me think there was a slightly different book than uh, sort of the general consensus that I have um, in my book collection. Some snippets from the back 
um, of the reviews say a heartbreaking novel both beautiful and brutal our book of the year um, about a little boy in 1980s Glasgow it looks like a great book so I thought I would give that a go and then a theatre for dreamers this is set in the 1960s I feel like this is going to be one that I read in the summertime I don't know what it is about book covers that are very summery like this I've got another couple that have very summery covers I can't bring myself to read them until it's spring summertime because it just doesn't feel right to read a book that looks summery and also set on a Greek island during the winter months. It mentions it being a blissful piece of escapism. Yeah, looking at the reviews, I was really intrigued by the way the book is written. This one, Turtle Doves All the Way Down by John Green. I've read a fair few of his books. I couldn't even tell you what this was about. Did I finish this one? I've got quite a few young adult books here and they're just not like there's a couple that I really like but I just I'm you know I'm nearing my 30s now and it just doesn't quite kind of lacks a bit of substance nothing it wasn't anything special to me um we've got shelf life which I haven't read um that was one that I sort of picked up and liked the look of we've got ghosts um I've seen loads of people read it so I'd like to read that at some point Hamnet there are some books here that I bought under the recommendation of Jack Edwards. If you're into books and you're into YouTube, you've probably most definitely um, come across him on here before. This was one of them. I'm gonna get buried in books soon, aren't I? Exciting Times. I see that David Nichols has read it, who is the author of one of my favorite books, which is, oh, I forgot I've got books over there, haven't I? He says it's a sharp, smart, witty, modern love story. Someone else has said, very funny and really mean. Sounds like it's my cup of tea. Got high hopes for this one. My Policeman, that was another Jack Edwards one. I think that was from the video he did on Harry Styles um, because I bought this and I also bought Watermelon Trigger. I'm gonna have to put these books on the shelf, aren't I? And then we've got Liar which is um, another sort of short one that I like the look of and Paperweight, which I don't know how I have this one. I've had this for a long time. I don't even, I don't know whether it was a freebie, but yes, um, let's, let's get these on the shelf. Saying that, I have some other books, some of the bigger books um, at the bottom of the pile that I want to put on first. So maybe I'll just pop those there for now. I love that I'm filming this on a really gloomy day in the darkest room of the house. Hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. But I don't tend to get hardbacks because I don't love reading hardbacks. These ones are Unsettled Ground and Where I Ran Away. It's funny how we all have our preferences over style of book. I will always pick paperback over hardback. I do not love floppy books. So this is slightly bigger. I've got one that is a little bit bigger than this one. I, I don't like it when they're big and floppy. Just make it shorter and thicker. <laughs> Do any of you prefer reading hard backs over paperback? Because I don't know anyone that does, but I'm sure there are people out there. And also, are you a, I've been told off before for doing it. This is every last word. This was actually, I, I'm pretty sure it's um, young adult, but um, I did really love the message behind this book. It was a nice, it was a nice book. I don't use a bookmark. I just turn the pages over where I need to mark where I've um, last read. I've been told off for doing that. And also, I'm just taking this sticker off. This is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I also break the spines, which I know is controversial as well. But I just don't know how people read a book, especially a big chunky book. Call Me By Your Name. <laughs> I read most of it and I've, I've spoken about this before. I didn't Mm, I don't know, I've watched the film as well and I also it made me feel quite uncomfortable there's quite a big age gap between the characters I had someone say oh are you just uncomfortable because it's two men would you if it was a, if it was a, um, a, a, f a female and a male having this relationship would you feel uncomfortable and to that I replied yes I absolutely would because it's the age gap you know the perks of being a wallflower I read this probably 10 years ago and um it's actually, I didn't realise how short this book was. It's only 220 pages. Probably the oldest book I own. Here we have adults, grown-ups, 
again ones that I've seen lots of people reading and I thought I'd pick them up and then we've also got making nice which I just again I like the sound of this one looks like quite a long book let's try and squeeze this in here with books like this I mean almost this one's almost a bit too big to completely bend but when I'm reading a book I don't know how people read books without breaking the spine I like to just bend the book I know and then I completely fold it up because I like to really get into it I think it's nice when a book's been sort of really read and loved and and it looks like it's been read but then at the same time I do really like them looking brand new. I will get onto some of my favourite books in a second. I think all, there must be all in that pile over there. I remember trying to read everything I know about love last year and I, could, I couldn't get into it. And it seems to be one of those books, I think you can see this is how far I got in the book. I got to page 16. I could say I didn't give it a good shot. This was a divider when I spoke about this on Instagram some of you said you loved it and others said don't bother if i can't have you i bought because i think it was recommended easily up there with the girl on the train and eleanor oliphant eleanor oliphant which is over there is one of my favorite books and so i thought i would give that a shot i've tried to read a couple of sally rooney's books and i feel like i'm not the right pet i feel like i'm not allowed to critique um, any style of writing or any books because there's absolutely no way I could ever write a book. I mean, I'm more than capable. I was a, you know, an average to above average. I got A, like B's, like B's in English. I'm not an author. I wasn't a English lit student. So I feel, I feel like I don't have the right to critique anyone's writing. But I just don't love that she doesn't use quotation marks. Um, and it just, the read, I just didn't like the way it read. So I had issues with reading, um, where is it? I'm not sure where it is, but Conversations with Friends, I tried to read and I, I just had to stop. I couldn't get into the characters, but I also didn't love the way um, it was written without the quotation marks. All of a sudden, I had this feeling of, oh, am I going to get judged on my books? Oh gosh, I know what the internet's like. Okay, so let's talk about... Let me actually show you my favourite books. I'm sure if I thought this would be a better angle than it is. <laughs> you can't even you can't even see the bookshelf. Those of you who have watched every vlog probably could guess what my favourite books are so far. I'm I'm actually I'm fairly new to the book life. I spent most of my life not or thinking I didn't enjoy reading when it was more of a couldn't focus and I found that frustrating so I just never bothered reading but then something happened in the first lockdown I really got something out of reading and I think it's it's you know it's great to have the time out it's, it's great to have the time away from screens and I found that it when I could get into it it was really nice form of escapism that isn't watching tv or watching youtube I picked up a little life um it's a, it's a hefty book this is a, a really hard read um i did actually buy it after seeing jack edwards read it pop that one there i should probably start putting some books up there i don't know whether to maybe put some books on their side i'll play around with it another day i do think i need to get some bookends the bookend that i have over here is from west elm it is hefty. I said to Doug the other day that if we had an intruder in the house, this would be my choice of weapon because it, it would do some damage. The books that we have here are um, the most fun we ever had. I, I'm actually, um, I actually read the paperback version rather than um, this version. But we've got My Ex-Life um, before my actual heart breaks. Also, how pretty is this cover? It is hardback, but I can made an exception. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Um, I read this last year. Oh, I love this. I have such a soft spot for this. I just loved how blunt the main character was. I just really enjoyed it. I don't really know how to sum up this book other than I just really liked it. I think I read this one quite quick. Norwegian Wood is one that I haven't yet finished reading. For some reason I just couldn't get into it and I don't know whether it was because it's a male perspective, maybe I found it hard to relate as much to the character, there's just there just wasn't something that was clicking for me. We've got The Bell Jar and we've got this book which I picked up when we were in Hastings and we came across this really cute 
um, bookshop and I wanted to buy something from there and um, so I grabbed this this is another as you can see from the cover very summery looking read so I'll, I'll save this for the summertime getting all tangled up in this plant there's no point in me really getting all these out to show you or is there mm -mm -mm. maybe I will hang on hang on I've definitely spoken about some of these before so I'm sorry to repeat myself let's do a little swap okay um should we sit down here on the uh the sofa we've had this sofa for almost two weeks now i love it even more than when we first got it I, just, oh, I love it and i haven't had to clean it once i don't know what it is about this fabric because i i've had people say oh don't get a fabric velvet sofa um don't get a fabric bell don't get a fabric velvet sofa don't get a velvet sofa because you'll be lint rolling it and cleaning it every day i haven't had to hoover it lint roll it clean it anything but saying that we did have a fabric sample for another sofa and it was a darker velvet from a different company and the swatch within a day was covered in lint and fluff and all sorts this is one i mentioned recently you'd be home by now which is by the same author of girl in pieces really enjoyed this book so um I thought I'd read this one. Also, how I really love her colour choices. I do have another book of hers. Got Where the Core Dads Sing. I love this book. Um, it took a while for me to get into it. Also, I think part of the reason I enjoyed this is because... No, see, I'm getting this mixed up with another book. I was about to say it's set where we live. And it's not set where we live. <laughs> I'm getting it mixed up with Small Pleasures. Beautifully written book. Loved the way everything was described, I really felt like I was there. One Day by David Nichols. Pretty sure this was the first book that I read. So this lighting's not, my lighting's not great, is it? This was the first book that I read during lockdown last year. And um, I really enjoyed it. It made me cry. Um, I know a book is good if it makes me cry. Um, I cried a couple of times during this book, both happy and sad tears. Also have his book, Us. And then we have um, Holding Up the Universe. Was See, did I like, was this the one that I liked? I think I did like this one, but it is very young. Then we have Little Fires Everywhere. I felt really gripped by the story. I do have another one of her books. And I don't know, I don't know where it is. I've got this one. Um, this is yesterday. Um, how pretty is this cover? I'm going to put these back. Oh, I've also got City of Girls, which is one I'm really looking forward to reading. Lots of you have said that you like this book. We're almost done. We're almost done. Two more of my favourites here. Half the World Away. Easily up up there as... See, I don't, th I don't think I could pick... A, an all-time favourite favourite, but um, this is definitely up there. I just, there was just something about this book that was so simple, which is the kind of the books that I like, just everyday life, people's everyday lives, that it really, it really got me there. A sister, Kerry, and a brother, Noah, and they get separated as children, and they meet up again as adults, and they live two very different lives. Felt like that was a good story, um it was good to follow easy to read it, it felt i did feel like it was predictable but with how much i loved the book it just made up for the fact that it was a bit predictable and it, it made me cry it made me cry multiple times yeah such a good book and then um the other kathleen glasgow book that i have is how to make friends with the dark the female persuasion i remember starting reading it reading this in october it was like oh, i think it was before the Oh, what was it? The lockdown we had last November, the one that we were promised that if we lock down for four weeks, you'll definitely get a Christmas. <laughs> this is one that I do want to pick up again. I don't know why I stopped reading it. Just life, life got busy and um, I didn't do much reading between October and December last year. Quite different from a lot of the other books I have and the subjects that it touches on. Um, so I do want to pick this up again. My cheeks are going really hot and flustered. I'm so hot right now. Oh, there's the Hermes delivery man. I don't, think he, I don't think he's got anything for me. I'm really hoping he doesn't look in here right now. I can never really tell how much people can see with our blinds. Because I know it depends on the way that you have them. Okay, oh, this is another favourite of mine. This is where we leave you. I also really, really love the film. And again, just very normal 
normal life. I loved the humour. I'm pretty sure this made me cry and laugh. Yeah, I don't know, you know, if a book has a little bit of dry, dark humour, that always wins points for me. Here we have Conversations with Friends, the regulars, which I read and... Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a huge amount to say about that one. Everything I Never Told You, which is the... Um, another book from the author who wrote Little Fires Everywhere. We have Olive, which I have seen lots of people reading. Seen lots of people reading the hardcover. I thought, no, no, I need to try and find a paperback version. Looking forward to reading that. Small Pleasures, which is um, one of my more recent um, finished reads. I really enjoyed it. A bit miffed at the end. Um, like quite a few people who have read the book. There's a few, there's like some people that think, oh no, it ended, ended quite cleverly. I liked how the beginning and the end linked up. But I thought there were a lot of people, including myself, who felt like the ending was missing. I feel like I'd read an incomplete copy. Like it, it printed and not printed the last couple of pages. And again, this is another one set in the 50s. It's set in the suburbs of South East London, which is essentially where we live. So they were mentioning places not too far from us and they were also mentioning places in London, going to Charing Cross Station and so it felt very, it was very close to home which made it feel, it's just nice isn't it when you, know, you kind of imagine, you, you kind of can really imagine where these characters are and what the countryside looks like when they're talking about driving through the country lane. So although I think there are a couple of bits including the ending that could have been improved I do really like this book and I do think it's still worth a read, especially if you just want a really easy read. Right, so I'm gonna get these on the shelf. There's only two, there's only three more here. Let me show you those quick. We have Must I Go, and this is the paperback version of the most fun we ever had. Then the last thing he told me, this is one of the Reese Witherspoon book club books. And I wanted to read it because I've heard that it's getting um, made into a film. Talking of her book club, things getting made, in, made into a film. I'm sure, gosh, I almost dropped them all. I'm pretty sure I read that the Crawdads film is coming out in July. Not sure I can wait until July, but I'm just going to have to wait until July. I did think it would come out a bit sooner, but yeah, I'm really excited to watch that. Plus, it will probably be good that I don't watch, because whenever I've read a book and watched a film, it's usually I'll read the book and then I'll watch the film straight away. It's probably going to be quite nice to read, read, to watch the film a year after reading it, because the book won't be as fresh in my mind and certain details, my mind will probably let it slip compared to if I read it fresh, watched it fresh. Oh, guys, we're halfway through the day. We're, I've almost made it. Did actually have, um, oh, you can't see them. I did actually have a few of these, had these two and another one on my bedside table because I liked what they looked like. Um, so now my bedside table looks really empty, but I, I kind of want them down here. Oh, oh, okay, I, I really need to put this camera down, otherwise I'm gonna drop all my books. I love having these shelves here. It, just, it fills in this empty space and it just makes it feel more homey and cozy. It just makes the room feel a bit more coherent and oh, I can't wait to get our Christmas tree in. And we've got the green sofa, which feels so much more cozy. And it's just, oh gosh, it's just going to feel um, the coziest this living room has felt. I'm not putting this one up here because it's too big. So like, I've got some hard, like, some of the hardbacks are fine. You can see they're only very, very slightly overhanging. And then actually, I thought, I thought the paperbacks, because they're about 15 centimetres in depth, or they're at 13 and a half, they're about, they're somewhere around 15 centimetres, maybe a little bit less. This part of the wall is slightly less than that. But actually, you can barely tell. And I don't think, I don't think it looks strange that they're overhanging a little bit. Um, but this is a little too big. I, get, I mean, it'll be fine. Like, it just sticks out a lot, and it's the only only book that sticks out that much. In this instance, I wouldn't put that one up there. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed having a having a nose at my, um, my book collection. Let me know if you recommend... I mean, not that I need anyone to be enabling me to get any more books right now. Let me know if there are any books that you recommend. Maybe let me know what some of your all-time favourite books are. And then when I've got through some of these books, and I'm, I'm starting to look for a few more, then I can reference back to this video. I'd also just love to know what books you love and if you've read any of the books that I've, that I've mentioned today. Loads more room for books. <laughs> She has 
yeah. 10.30. Thank you so much. Thanks, bye. Delilah. Hi. Oh, so scary. Thanks for watching. Bye. I really need to take down those Halloween decorations. I needed to get changed into some comfy clothes. I just needed to put on some baggy clothes. Nothing. I have got my go-to jumper, which is like the oldest thing I own. I've said this so many times before. Do any of you have a really, really old item of clothing that you'll never throw away because it's just a really good go-to comfy piece? Hi. Been in the kitchen making um making our dinner oh my goodness hello yeah. i've also booked mine and delilah's hair this appointment looks like i just about got us in before the new year dinner is a uh, a curry you've made me you've seen me make made me um you've seen me make curry so many times in different variations i wanted to redo a curry that i made I made a curry a month or two ago. It was really nice. And then the following day, I um, I had some tofu left over from another meal. I chucked that into the curry and it was really good. So I thought, let's make that. Problem is, I can't remember <laughs> what curry I made. We're loosely following this chana masala recipe. I'm not sure if it was that one or whether it was one that I found on the internet. Who knows? I've got my base here with the spices and the onion and um tin tomatoes i'm going to chuck in some chickpeas and some coconut milk i'm not even sure if i had chickpeas in the last one i think i did we've got the tofu for later which i'll just chop up and add in and heat through at the end and then we have our veggies here we had lots of things to use up we've got some baby sweet corn broccoli cauliflower aubergine courgette let's get this going again I'm just gonna bung everything together oh I want to cook, not milk, not chickpeas. I'm gonna bang everything together, hope for the best. You know it's cold when your coconut milk is rock solid. Don't be fooled by this. Our meals have been a rotation of pasta and sausage and mash for the last fortnight. I think this is the first thing I've properly cooked, although I did my bank noodles the other night. One by one, they dance and bless you. Dogs on bedtime story tonight. I've hit a wall now. I mean, I've, I've hit a few walls today, but I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm really tired. I tried these last night. The Rescue Remedy, they're new. I don't know what they're actually called. Peaceful Night Capsules. They've, they've just got vitamins and magnesium and, and bits in. Clearly it didn't do much, but I don't think it's... I think it's something that you take every day. And over time it will help. The other day I actually bought some... I um, bought some Nitol, which I've never used before. It's only a temporary solution. It's not the kind of, it's not the sort of thing that I'd take every night before bed. I'm hoping if I take one of those tonight, then I can maybe override my body keep waking up and um, not being able to. I'm really struggling to get to sleep and stay asleep. The second I wake up, I'm I'm thinking straight away. I'm hoping there's going to be some of you watch. Well, actually, no, I hope <laughs> hoping not because it's not very nice, but. Um, I'm hoping some of you watching this think, oh yeah, no, I completely get it. Doug's one of those people that falls asleep and then he wakes up in the morning. I've, I've, I've rarely done that. When I do, it's amazing. Then it just ends up being this vicious cycle of, I haven't got, got enough sleep, which is a, a big trigger for my anxiety. So then I'm more anxious and then the more anxious I am, the more likely I'm not going to sleep as well and I'm going to wake up more. I'm hoping if I can trick myself into having a good night's sleep tonight that will make me feel better and in turn hopefully less anxious and then I'm less anxious so then I should sleep better tomorrow and the following day. Here's the hoping. So tempting right now to just lie down and go to sleep. So also what's been really annoying the past week is um being downstairs watching telly thinking oh i feel really sleepy my eyes feel really sleepy oh, let's go to bed and then as soon as i'm in bed 
I'm wide awake. Probably a good idea. I say goodbye now. I think, I think I'll have enough to have for my lunch tomorrow. Thanks for watching the vlog. I will see you in the next one.